In this video, I'm going to share short beaten nails transformation for Anna and a winter style nail art. Also, I will share one of the most painful experiences of working with a client. By painful, I mean literally, I could feel pain and had to lay in bed for the next day after working with this client. Coming up. Hello, this is Anastasia. In this video, we are going to transform Anna's nails using acrylic. No tips or forms method. And since this is winter time, we are going to do some simple snowflakes nail art. I also wanted to say thank you so much for all the support and your interest in Anna's progress. Every time she comes to me, we are reading your comments and get so inspired by that. Let's get started. This is what Anna's nails look like today, not too bad and definitely better than they were when she first came, but this time I think we almost had a month and a half, probably two months gap, so you can see that it's actually harder to push back the cuticles again. That's why I'm using a metallic pusher, but still doing it very gently. A couple months ago, I visited school in Durham, North Carolina. I used to do some classes there before pandemic. They were students and I was sharing different experiences of how I became an influencer, how I started teaching and so on. After a short presentation, we did some Q&A session and one of the students asked a very interesting question. What was your most challenging and hard experience of working with a client? And this is the one I'm going to share with you today. When I started doing nails, I didn't have a home studio, like I didn't have a table or furniture or something that I could use to organize working station at home. Also, I couldn't get at the salon who will get me hired. So I decided that I'm going to start working as a mobile nail technician. I didn't have a car back then, so I had this sports bag that I was carrying with me. The total weight was around 5 kilograms. I was doing mostly acrylic extensions, so I didn't really have to use an LED lamp, but there were many fills, so I still had to take an electric nail file with me, as well as all the needed products and supplies. However, I tried to use small jars, let's say for acrylic powders and for monomers, so I will not need to take too much with me. After first few services, I realized that most people do not have a good table lamp, you know, like an office lamp. And in most places, lightning is rather dark. It's just not enough to work with nails. So I realized that I need to take my own lamp with me. Meanwhile, I'm doing dry manicure on Anna. This is a flame bit, diamond bit, red abrasive mark. The speed is 18,000 rotations per minute. As I push up the cuticles, clean the sidewalls, we can see as the nail bed shows up and actually looks a bit longer. Another problem of being a mobile nail technician was that not everyone has a comfortable table or chairs in their house. For example, there is one client, she has a really big apartment, but the only table that she has was this big, beautiful round table. And it was extremely hard to do nails while you sit at it because it was so big, I had to lean on it. And then I remember my ribs and my stomach was actually hurting after working like this. If I had a car back then, I'm pretty sure I would have taken table, chairs and like everything I need with me. But for using a public transportation, it was obviously too heavy. One time my client was a young girl. I never asked her age and didn't even think about it, but she looked like she is in her early 20s to me. And then when we were almost finished, I did acrylic extensions and was about to do a design. Then her mom came and then she entered her room and started yelling at her. She was mad about the smell. As you probably know, acrylic has a certain smell and she could feel it throughout the entire apartment. And it feels kind of weird and uncomfortable, you know, when you just sit there filing someone's nails and then this other person is yelling at her. I was just sitting there quietly and just thinking to myself, oh my god, I didn't do anything, I'm just a nail technician, I'm going to finish nails and just go, please don't hurt me. 
It was not a story yet, it was just a little warm up so you guys can have an idea of different kinds of experiences when you're working as a mobile nail technician. Like I said, not everyone has comfortable table or chairs in their home, but most people have an ironing board and this is a great solution and was always a lifesaver for me because most people have it in their apartments. You can adjust the height according to your preference and it is rather narrow so it's super comfortable to sit in front of your client. The only disadvantage is that there is no room for your legs or your client's legs, but it's still so much better than working in front of the huge round table, trust me. One day I come to this client, I don't remember exactly whether she had one kid or two kids, but there was a kid for sure, and she doesn't have a table, like nothing that looks or can work as a table, like nothing at all, nor she has an ironing table. So I'm just standing there and thinking, how are we going to work? And she said, oh, actually we have a small table that my son uses and shows me this small kids table. In addition to this table, there were also chairs that were designed for this table. And they had this special armrests. And because of this wooden armrest, I just couldn't fit my butt in there. Well, at some point I could do that, even though I was rather skinny back then. It just felt like something is squeezing you from two sides, so it was just not possible sitting on that chair. So she offered me to sit on a turtle instead, you know, this kind of toy turtle, and it felt almost like I'm sitting on the floor, but still it was a bit better than sitting in these small chairs that I couldn't really fit in. As far as I remember, I had to do product removal, new acrylic extensions and some kind of design. It took me overall probably two hours and a half, maybe three hours, but it felt like eternity, like seriously. It was very dark and yes, I had my own table lamp, but still it was like dark overall. On top of that, this kid's table was rather small, so I could barely fit the products that I needed, including my electric nail file. When I finished, I could barely get up, like I couldn't feel my legs, probably the blood was not circulating there as well as it should, but I did. And I remember the next day, everything was hurting, like really bad. My back, my neck, my wrists, like everything. And this was the point where I started thinking that probably I should find a way to work in a different way. Because if I'm going to work like that, I'm not going to stay healthy for long. Meanwhile, I take off the surface shine with 180 degree file and then I'm going to trim the cuticles. I use scissors when working with Anna all the time because on some of her nails the cuticle and the aponychium is separated, on some of them she has hangnails and cuts, so it's just easier for me to use the scissors so I'm not going to hurt her and clean all the skin that is already separated. Her nails look so much better now and this particular nail we can actually see the nail bed growing longer, which is definitely a good sign. We're done with the dry manicure, it already looks so nice and clean and now we are going to do the second part of the transformation acrylic extensions. First I'm going to apply dehydrator and let dry and then I'm going to use an acid primer. As I figured throughout these two years that we've been working with, this combination works best for Anna. Make sure that acid primer is dry before you proceed to the application. Since holidays are over, but it's still winter time, we decided to do something using snowflakes. So I will be using a different colors on each nail. And this acrylic powder is by Glam and Glitz. As usual, I'm not going to use forms or tips, it's all about the consistency. So when you work near the free edge, you need to pick up the bead that is almost dry and this will allow you to do this extension without using a form. 
And getting back to the story, let me know, guys, if you've ever had different kinds of experiences when it was physically not comfortable working with a client. Like I said, after this mobile service experience, I realized that I need to do something to have this comfortable place to work at. And eventually I started working from home. I just organized a small space, bought a small table from Ikea, couple chairs. And I remember this time when clients started to come to me, to my apartment, and oh my God, it felt so good when you have this great lightning, comfortable chair, comfortable table. All you need is right here. And when a client wants this blue color, you do not need to worry that you do not have it with you today because you have all the products and supplies at one place. Eventually, I realized that working from home was also not the best option because I was sleeping and taking clients in the same room and it was not so good on my health. So I had to rent a space in the nail salon later. So if you would like to learn more about it, let me know. I can share working from home experiences in one of my next videos. Meanwhile, I encapsulate the nail with a clear acrylic powder and now I would like to show you the trick which is very important when you're working with the nails like Anna, the nails that are naturally white. Once the product sets a little bit and looks matte, you need to slightly pinch the nail and this is how you will get a beautiful shape, a beautiful curve and the nails are not going to look white. When I did this glitter nail, I realized that I also want to add the snowflake accessories, but they do not look as good on the glitter background, well, from my opinion. Actually, I think I would like to hear your thoughts on this too, so when I will be finished, I will show you. And I thought that we need probably to do a nude nail, and then I can add this metallic accessories in the shape of the snowflakes. That's why I need to create one nail that will be nude. But I'm not applying the product so it will be like a finished nail yet, because I also need to install them and to encapsulate them. That's why Currently, we have something like which is a half of the sculptured nail. Add a small bead near the cuticle and blend it towards the rest of them. There are a few ways on how you can install metallic accessories inside of acrylic nails. You can just use the wet product until it's cured or you can use an additional clear acrylic bead and that's the technique that I'm using. At this point, I realized that Anna's nails are still so small and I'm using the smallest size of the snowflakes that I have because the other ones, they're just bigger. Anyways, I encapsulate them with the clear and then slightly pinch the nail. And I encapsulated only the part where the snowflakes was. And then I encapsulate the entire nail because we still need to build the apex. We are done with the application. This is what the nails look like. And yes, we were experimenting a little. On one hand, we did some silver background with the snowflakes on. And also we have a few glitter nails. And then it is time to do filing and shaping. I like using this kind of carbide bit to file the nails, especially near the cuticle and along the sidewalls, because it is so narrow, I can easily reach these areas without touching the skin. This video is more detailed than I usually do. I included every single step of the process. So let me guys know if you like it this way, because honestly, I get worried sometimes. Like, isn't that too much? And what if you get bored when watching this? I do nail videos and online classes for many years now, so I have some experience in it. But now I remember one of the first times that I started recording videos and I realized that I cannot lean as much as I do when I normally work with a client or do my own nails because there's the camera on top, so you do not want to block it. So you just have to move a little further than you normally do and this is how you're supposed to work. But honestly, it wasn't a big problem for me because I just shared a story how I worked in a very extreme and uncomfortable conditions with different clients. So after this kind of experiences, it didn't seem too hard for me. I also used this carbide bit to file and shape the free edge, but still I'm doing a little retouch with a hand file. 
because this is how we can reach the side walls. There's another observation I wanted to share with you is that lately when we're doing Anna's nails, it's taking longer than usual, even though her nails are in a better shape now. So why do you think is that happening? Well, it's pretty simple. We are talking too much, like a lot. Because when she started coming, we talked too, but not as much. You know, when you know someone not that well, obviously you do not talk like all the time. But once it's someone you know and you have things to discuss, well, you just talk all the time. So once you do that, your service is getting slower. It doesn't matter how professional you are or what kind of experience you have, it still slows you down. And this is what happening when I'm working with Anna. Last part of the service is very important. I do it all the time after all filing, shaping and buffing is buffing the skin around the nail. I use this diamond bead. This is red abrasive mark. I think it's falling off because I've been using it in dry heat sterilizer. The speed is around 14,000 rotations per minute. And this is the great way to make the skin super smooth, to get rid of different kind of hang nails, to make sure that there will be nothing to hold on to and her skin is going to be in a better condition next time, hopefully. When working with the large size of the drill bit like that, it's important to work fast. As you can see, I'm not holding it at one spot for a long time because this is how we can cause heating. That's why I move constantly all the time. Areas where we have different cuts and wounds, we simply need to avoid them, like do not touch them at all. If there's a hangnail and there's another cut right next to it, it is better to fix it with some kind of cutting tool, scissors or nippers. I used to like watching product removal and cuticle trimming, but now I find this part so satisfying too, right? Especially when the skin is dry, you can actually see how it's getting more clean and doesn't look as dry as it used to. And I was really happy about the set that we did this time because it was her favorite shape, square nails. And we are done with the filing and shaping and all we need to do is to seal with the top coat and now we can see how this glitter nails look like. I was a little worried that it's gonna be too much, this silver snowflakes on top of the silver glitter nail, but now I think it's okay but probably I still like the nude nail better. So let me guys know what do you think. Is it too much having this silver snowflakes with the silver glitter or is it fine? Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here on my channel, consider subscribing as I post new nail transformation story time videos just like this one every week. See you in my next one. Goodbye.